Well, one of the great things about filming in the garden is I get all my garden work done. One of the bad things is we have to film in weather like this. We are right in the middle of some rain, cold rain, and we've got to get this done for our in the garden video. And today we're going to plant bulbs, one of my favorite things to do, something that I beg gardeners to do. And I've got lots of cool stuff to plant, but first off, I want to show you some stuff in the garden and five beds of garlic are planted here and check out these veggies here in the cold frame. They, we got these in just in the nick of time and they're really happy in there. Those are going to go all winter long. Let me show you a couple more things in the garden and then we're going to plant some really cool stuff. Come on. Have you ever seen a lilac blooming in November? Uh, this one's called Bloomerang. It's relatively new. And it doesn't give you the intense fragrance of a spring blooming lilac, but it blooms in the spring, in the summer, and then again in the fall. And so that repeat blooming makes this lilac so that it's not a one trick pony. Now check out this flower that's still here. Mexican sunflower or tithonia is one of my favorites. It's a half hardy annual. We haven't got much of a frost yet, just a little frost. So this will hang in here until a hard freeze. And check out the world's ugliest cold frame. This is just an old garden cart that's been transformed with a window on top of it. The plants are inside and we'll see how it does. I think it's kind of fun. <laughs> Not the prettiest thing, but perfect for my garden. All right, let's get our bulbs planted. For me, there's nothing more important than putting bulbs in this time of the year. I know we don't get instant gratification from it, but the gratification that we get in the spring is phenomenal and for me there's only one way to plant them and that's using this power planter ball bogger it's the best i've ever used i love it and you can plant seriously 100 bulbs in maybe 15 minutes with this to work on any drill and i got these bulbs from two different sources and it's important where you get your bulbs first off was john sheeper's beauty from bulbs uh, i know that that's a reliable source for bulbs they tell you how big the bulb is then I also bought some at Best Feeds. And I love to go through a bin of bulbs like this, and you can see. This is going to mean three blossoms instead of just one. And so if there's gonna be a bin of bulbs there, I'm first gonna make sure they're nice and firm, like all the ones coming from John Sheepers are. But also, I'm looking for those extra big bulbs, bigger is better, and these extra noses. And so this is what we call a split corona daffodil, and I can't even remember the name, <laughs> called Trapolo. It's so cool. And so that's gonna go right here with another one that I love from John Sheepers called Lingerie. And I learned about that by interviewing Joanne from John Sheepers. And I love to be able to pick the brain of an expert like that. Like, hey, what, what is your favorite double daffodil? First thing that came up was lingerie, and I can't wait to see it in the spring. All we're gonna do is plant this about three times as deep as the bulb is. For a daffodil like this, it's pretty deep, but I've got some other really cool bulbs in here we're gonna talk about that don't have to be planted so deep. So I'm excited about uh, these bulbs. This is something different. This is from John Sheepers, and it's a fritillaria that Joanne turned me on to called Green Dreams. And you can see the size of that bulb. With the crocuses, we plant little, you know, three inches, four inches with a fritillaria. This thing's gotta go way down. And one of the things of, of using a place like John Sheepers is to grow something, something different. I'm gonna get these in the ground and we'll keep planting. That guy's going way down there. Well, I found one of my trolls. Remind me to paint that handle red. <laughs> uh, I've been working on this area for a couple seasons. Uh, I, in my garden journal, and you better have a garden journal, I wrote down a couple springs ago, need more snow crocus in here probably had 10 or 15 snow crocus, not nearly enough. I put a couple hundred in last year and oh, it was spectacular. It's the first one of the first things to bloom. And, and even though you know they're here, they're always a surprise because it's just maybe one or two days of sun and warmth and 
bam, they're up. And then their name, snow crocus, they're covered in snow. I've got two varieties. I've got Lady Killer, which is a snow crocus that's named for our videographer, James. And one that's very important to me, this is a, a bigger crocus called Yellow Mammoth. And my mother wasn't much of a gardener, but when I was a little boy, she had these yellow mammoth crocuses right at the front door and I can remember running home from school to see them blooming and knowing that, hey, school might be over soon. <laughs> so we'll put some yellow mammoth in here. The funny thing about yellow mammoth is it, when it blooms, it outs it for the chipmunks. They, <laughs> they see those flowers and that's it. They start eating them up. So I treat these as annuals. All right, I'm gonna get these in, my lady killers in, and then we're gonna finish up and get out of this rain. <laughs> One thing we don't have to worry about is fertilizing those bulbs. They've got everything they need until next year. Uh, once they bloom and the flowers are gone, I'll throw a granular fertilizer called Bulb Tone down there just to help them out. Now there's lots of information about planting bulbs and garlic and this late season planting at everybodygardens.com and that's where you can get your own bulb auger because I made them put it in there. This is my probably my favorite garden tool. Until next week, I'm going inside getting some hot cocoa and all these will go in tomorrow when it's 68 and sunny. We'll see you then.